Good morning. Welcome to the Celtic Way Morning Briefing Live. I'm Tony Haggerty, a Haggerty 10 Twitter handle. You know the drill by now. I'm joined by Sean Martin at Sean Martin TCW and Alison McConnell. Hello, guys. How are we doing? Very well, thank you. Not bad, Tony. Yeah, yourself? Yes. Another happy Monday. We're getting used to these, eh? Magic. <laughs> uh, Celtic 2 0 win in Dingwall yesterday, Sean. Pretty yeah. comfortable goal in the first half, late goal in the second half. Kyogo and Jota. And we were talking off air there. And uh, Alison did a piece about don't forget Kyogo on the <laughs> website. And you did a piece about Jota coming to the fore. Don't be surprised. And I also did a piece about how important Carter Vickers, Cameron Carter Vickers was to the team. We perished the thought we know what we're talking about. But Celtic still six point clear, four games to go. It's a great position to be in, is it not, Sean? Aye, I mean that's you. You couldn't ask for better. It was uh, what we said on Friday when we were discussing it. Was regardless of what happened at Fir Park, as long as Celtic won, then it was going to be at least six. Uh, it still is. You get into this derby on Sunday now, and although it's not officially a title decider, if they win on Sunday, the the goal difference is such that it's if if not a decider, certainly a a clincher in it. Um, if you want to, whatever way you want to kind of word it, there won't be. Any doubt, I don't think, left. <laughs> um, even though mathematically it's still possible if, if that's the case. So, no, they've, they've given themselves every chance. It's 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 testament to the, the players, the, the performance. As I said, I think they'd earned the, the, the credit to um, after the 33-game unbeaten run. It was still 27 games in the league only. Uh, that's still going. That's now 28 games. I said on Friday and Thursday and Wednesday and Tuesday, that they, 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 they earned the credit uh, to be believed that they could bounce back right away. And they did that, and I think they did. I mean, it, was, it wasn't it was swashbuckling. It wasn't a 6-7-0, one of those displays, but it was certainly comprehensive. I don't think it was uh, It was nervy. I saw that getting labelled quite a few times. Right. I don't think it was. I think, uh, apart from maybe a 10-minute spell in the second half when County played a wee bit higher up and, and, and did kind of throw more balls into the box, I think Celtic were pretty comfortable. Could have been yeah. more than one up at half time. They were two up by the end of it, and I think it could have been three or four. Alison, do you concur with that? Yeah, absolutely. I thought it was a very comfortable performance overall. I thought, um, obviously, one nothing. The longer the game goes on, lends itself to a, a kind of anxiety. But I thought mm. for much of that first half, Celtic played as though they were enjoying themselves. I thought they looked free from pressure. Um, I think if if you have Akiogo Furuhashi, who's up to match speed and fully fit, I think he he goes into the break with that hat trick minimum. Mm. Minimum, I yeah, think. Yeah. Um, I, I think Celtic had what probably in excess of twenty shots in that first half. I think they were thoroughly dominant. I didn't think there were any signs of uh, anxiety in the in the performance, uh, and I think how the the players celebrated the result, I think, tells you its own story. I think that yeah. is. It's almost where the, the league was won at Dingwall, and I think you could point to both the visits this season as being definitive. I think uh, any slip yesterday would have encouraged strangers. I think it would just have fed uh, any kind of pressure around the club and, and, and fed, fed maybe some of the hype that, that had seemed to build up last week. I think the fact that you just knock that on the head takes as much pressure as possible, as, as it's possible to take off going into a game against strangers. I think I think what you'll see next Sunday is a freedom of performance. I think you, you'll see Celtic playing without any apprehension at all. I think, um, one, in front of their own support, and two, knowing essentially that they've got themselves into a position where the, the title is, is is almost a formality. Sean, it was external influences that were building up the pressure, really, wasn't it? Nobody at Celtic was... Saying that they were succumbing to pressure or mention pressure, you know. No, nah, but I think I think I mean, despite whatever I, what Ange Postecoglou wants to say about it, that was always going to be the question after the way that they played and the way that the the result went at Hamden. That it was always going to be the discourse was only only always going to be how the Celtic bounced back from it because no matter what way you wanted to dress it up, it, it could have been a setback. It's testament to them that it wasn't. Yes. Um, but that it, it could have been. So I, I'm not really surprised that that was the kind of that was the discourse getting it. Um, again, the way that Postacoglu, the way that Greg Taylor was on Friday, um, and all, even David Turnbull, Alison spoke to you for the Sunday papers and stuff. That the way that they spoke again, you could hear the manager's words coming through them as well. 
not just the one game at a time thing, but blocking out external noise because that yeah. is where that's where the pressure comes from. You're right, Tony. Um, I'm just saying that it was only natural that was where the, that was yeah, where yeah. the discourse was going to be when a team loses a an unbeaten streak of that magnitude. Now that's not to say Matt Ange Postecoglou was was wrong because it, it, it's correct that it, it didn't knock the league momentum. But my point is, it could have. Yes. That's just more testament to them that it didn't. But I uh, I was very impressed by the fact that Ange Postecoglou. Alison was keen to stress that despite losing last week, nothing had affected the league. You know, they still had the chance to go to Dingwall and, and retain six points at least, assuming Rangers won on Saturday. So it was that kind of mindset that uh, that intrigued me. He kept yeah. making the point of saying that the, not, the league hadn't been affected by that one result, you know? The only effect is in perception. The effect yeah. is in, in a perceived slight in a, in a perceived knock of form or uh, as we spoke about we thought um, I thought Celtic could look leggy at Hamden I, I yeah. think you could argue you know I didn't think there was much between the teams at Hamden but I thought Celtic did look off the pace I didn't think it was one of their better performances of the season so I think it becomes a question of perception uh, are they you know is it a test of metal going into the, the, the final games or, or is it is it a possibility of it slipping, can Rangers use the momentum, the positive energy that comes from being Europa League semi-finalists and Scottish Cup finalists at Celtic's expense, can they use that to put pressure on Celtic? And I think what you saw was very much just a a muting of all that noise. I think <laughs> it, it, I think it's it's good management that you come out and basically you say, you know, we we become quite insular. We we listen to ourselves. You ignore everything that's going on round about you. I think there becomes a singularity of purpose. And I think uh, I think Sean's probably right. I think when you have a run of form that stretches to now 28 league games unbeaten, uh, then what you see is a level of consistency. I think Celtic have dropped six points in the yeah. league since October. You've been three draws since October. I think it, it points to a very consistent team. And that's what you saw. You saw a response. It was immediate. And it closes down that argument succinctly. It just offers a a rebuke. And I think in some ways, the first half performance at Dingwall reflected that. I think it, it, in some ways it felt like a response to the week. Well, yeah. you know, it, is this a nervous performance, really? And I think the answer probably was an emphatic no for that, that first 45 minutes. Sean, lots of good performances. Gives you your obligatory your chance to mention your your star man every week, Greg Taylor. But he was terrific <laughs> again. Jota uh, was terrific. Kyogo uh, getting back in the score sheet. Alison had mentioned his his value in the closing weeks of the season. Carter Vickers solid again. I mean, yep. there was uh, there was quite a lot of Callum McGregor outstanding mm-hmm. again. You know, so you, you get through that team and there was five or six that really shone out yesterday, wasn't there? I don't think anybody who started had anything other than a good game. I tweeted that out after the game. I did think that Taylor had a great game again. I think, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, several times this season I've said to you that um, his better games have been Celtic's bigger games. Uh, so the yeah. two or three Rangers games in the Hibs in the League Cup final. Now, it might not be that you put County away at Dingwall in the 34th game of the, the league season up there at, on that level. But again... There's a reason that this is our. This was arguably the kind of the game that you looked at and went away at Dingwall County, good form, all of that, and, and thought that's, that's the potential banana skin and all of that. So for another good game to come in that kind of situation, especially after a cup defeat, where again I thought he had a good game, um, it's just him kind of hammering away at the door of the, yeah, yeah. the critics. I think again, uh, I think Jota was a Jota was a standout though overall. Yeah, yeah for me. Um, was, yeah. Again, that benefits me to say that after the well well timed article saying Jota's uh, Jota has actually come up big this season. Um I think you can see right away, and this is no slight on Yakimakis. I think again I thought I thought he played all right when he came on. I thought he I remember he hit the bar with his, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, with his shot getting across the, the, the defender that let Jota. One touch, Sean. Yes, one touch, aye. Um so I thought he played well. It's no slight on him. I think Jota and Kyogo together, there's something just there's something there with the, the connection the two of them have got, and that's been the case. Since uh, since the start of the season when Jota arrived, so uh, no, it bodes well. I think uh, Kyogo faded a wee bit towards the kind of middle bit of the second half, and that's why it's good to have somebody like Yakimakis to come off 
off the bench. And no, I, I genuinely don't think there was anything really overly negative about the display. I think everything, especially when you take it into the context of what happened last Sunday, I think it's a very, very positive result and a very positive frame of mind to be getting into the next game. Now, Troops, if you want to read some of these articles, you can subscribe. You can bet with a chance of winning a £100 gift card. You see it going along the bottom of your screen, www.celticway.co.uk forward slash subscribe. You can read Sean's article and Jota Allison's article on Jota and Kyogo and the importance of Kyogo. Some great stuff on there. Allison, it was well timed, those articles, as I say. But uh, you saw just you just saw the delight on Kyogo when he'd scored on his face again, getting on, on the score sheet. Brilliant header, great assist. But that was a huge part of Celtic's uh, first part of the season, wasn't it? The way those two played and the way they linked up, and it was just evident again yesterday. Yeah, I think they're quite the double act when they, they play together. I think they have a, a quite strong friendship off the park, too, and I think they have a, a clear understanding on it. I think. In the, the first half of the campaign, I think their relationship really was the, the 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 key element of Celtic's creativity in goals. I think um, between the two of them, they were claiming assists and, and responsibility for goals and they really were the focal point of Celtic's attack in, in that process of moving middle to front very, very quickly. I think they clicked on the, on the pitch. I think you see that. I think you see that there's an understanding and I think... Kyogo will um, will benefit from the game time last Sunday, from a week's training, and then obviously from playing a, a good part of, of Sunday's game. And I think what you'll see is, is him getting better across these last four games. I think uh, it's probably quite frustrating for him that he's missed so much of the season. I think there's an argument that if, if he'd stayed fit, I think you'd be looking at probably an excess of of 25 goals maybe this season if he'd been fit and available. And I think uh, there would have been a relief more than anything yesterday just to be back and to be fit and contributing again. And I, I think he will have a significant say between now and the end of the season and the same for Jota. Uh, whether or not Celtic see them and enjoy them beyond next season, playing together is a whole other question. Mm. Uh, but I think what you'll see is... Um, that the two of them will be involved in, in plenty of fairly big moments across the last four games. Sean, 11 goals, 12 assists for Jota. I wrote in my piece yesterday that it was the, that's the yep. highest contribution of assists from a, an outfield player this season in Celtic Jersey. Mm -hmm. You said as well that, yep, he'll have some big moments. Alison's alluded to it there. You know, with four to go, they'll, they'll want to have some big moments, won't they? You could argue, you could argue the moments in all of these games are going to be classed as big moments, but I think I, it's uh, obviously the the premise of my piece was looking at game changing goals rather than yeah, yeah. just goals in general and stuff like that, and rather than attributing something like that, like because you can do like expected points and stuff to try and attribute a value to the goal regardless of what the scoreline is at the time and, and and how long's left in the game and all that, I just looked at it at a kind of basic level of did it change the game from drawing to winning or losing yeah, the draw yeah, and that yeah. kind of thing and Jota like six of his seven league goals were goals that did that now obviously there's an assist that element there because yesterday despite the fact that gave Celtic breathing space scoring the second goal ultimately didn't make a difference to the result if you know what I mean yeah um but it was his assist that that, that got the winner as well so that uh, even that is a that is a big moment to come up in uh I just thought in general I thought again I don't think anybody had a bad game um yeah. I think it was timely from Jota because he was getting criticism in some quarters. Um, but again, having Kyogo back seemed to kind of inspire him a wee bit as well, I think, just having him yes. having him moving about. And again, that is not a slight on Yakimakis because him, Jota and, and Maida were playing really well together. So it's just, it's it's all a positive, to be honest. It's a win-win. Uh, I think that you could argue, I think actually I will argue that Kyogo's goal, that get disallowed, looked on side to me. Um, mm -hmm. So... If that goes in before half time, then is that a is that a different scenario entirely? Can when you can buy it for the second half? Probably. Yeah, I don't know what you think, but I thought it was on side. Yeah, there was an angle that showed you that uh, the Ross County player's leg was in front of of Kyogo. You know, it was very marginal. It was it was tight. I can understand why it was given offside, but that's mm. what you hope Bar will clear up for VAR when it's introduced mm. into Scotland. And I think VAR would possibly have given that. Mm -hmm. Alison. 
You have to hand it to the manager again, who's called it spot on, because most people would have wanted Jack and Marcus to lead the line on Sunday. Yet he's brought Kyogo in and he's repaid him with a goal and a, a decent performance. You said there if he was fit, he could have had a hat trick. You know, he just seems to call it right, doesn't he? The manager at this moment in time. I think that's what you're judged on as a manager, those kind of decisions. And I think, um, you know, sometimes it works, sometimes it, it doesn't. When uh, we were asked to obviously yeah. put in our lineups, I had assumed that Jack and Marcus would go straight back in because I thought Kyogo had looked significantly short of the pace at, at Hamden yeah. last week. So, but I think it's different. I suppose if you're if you're in Ange Postecoglou's shoes, you're having an opportunity to watch these guys Every day. all week to to make your own assessment, to use the data that's probably presented in front of you in t- terms of the sports science element of it. So he was clearly confident. That, uh, that he had enough fitness. And obviously it's a, a chicken and egg situation too because if you want to get him up to match speed, then he needs game time as well. But yeah, I think um, I think he had much to offer yesterday. I think he looked a lot like the Kyogo that you saw in the opening months of the season. I thought he looked sharper than he did last week. And I think it, it creates an interesting conundrum going into to Sunday's game and then going into the, the, the last couple of games of the season about who starts and, and how you set up. And I think we'd spoken about this before, just about yeah. you know, about the choices, particularly in the middle of the park and then obviously in that front three mm-hmm. too. Well, uh, that, I can't wait till Friday we dissect the front three for Sunday. I That'll think you can be sure that Kyogo starts. Again. I think uh, I think it's a given. I think now if he's fit, I think he starts. I think uh, I think that's reflected in the fact that he started yesterday. Yeah, mm. I, I I would go along with that, Alison. Yes, I, I really agree. He also uh, he also missed a sitter again, Tony, which I'm sure. Oh yeah. The two of us have spoke about a couple of times this season that he tends to even even if it was match fit, he tends to to have a sitter miss in him. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, but in a way, in a way, it's almost pleasing because he's back to miss a sitter to begin yeah. with. Um, he's, uh, but, uh, he's, no, he's, it was he's again. Aye, uh, but basically, I I mean. Uh, yeah, I think I think his disallowed goal was onside. It was tight. I think Yakovitis trailing leg plays him on. I think uh, there was also Maida called offside later in the game, and he didn't look it to me either. Mm-hmm. Uh, and well, we're on the officials. The the, the early kind of Ross Callahan stomping about. Um, I thought Ross did, Callahan. Did, did book him. To be fair, he did book him early. He maybe left it one challenge too long, but he did book him, um, and that disrupted that kind of attempt at physicality. So I'm sure Bobby Madden will be taking notes on that, but. <laughs> I thought Ross Callaghan should have been booked for his first challenge, Alison, alone. I yeah, I would tend to agree. Um, if, you yeah. watch that, if you watch that out, you make that statement, don't you? You just say, look, that's unacceptable. A booking, and it was a booking. And then yeah, he I think it's... And then he had to book him, you know. So. Yeah, you know the way he plays, and to be fair, like, and you know what he was trying to do, you know. But yeah, yeah I would agree with you. I thought he trod a fine line, actually. Yeah. Yesterday. Yeah, and I do say fair play to Clancy for letting it go one more, and then that was it. You know, he just he did say right, fine, but I I could argue that he could have got booked for the first one mm. alone. But again, referees maybe say you get one for nothing, don't you? Is that what it is? Is that the kind of rule that they apply? Might be early, but I, I'm of the opinion when, when it suits. That's what they apply yeah, because well, at the same time, it's um, it's usually here after the game. If it's an, especially if it's another ex referee analysing it. Well, if it's a foul in the first minute, it's, if it's a foul in the last minute, it's a foul in the first minute, but it's rarely ever applied yeah. like that, and I think you saw that yesterday too. I was just about to say that. It doesn't really matter if it's a foul yeah. in the first or last minute. You know, it's still the same game and it's still a foul, you know, but there you go. But I think uh, I think most... Uh, I'd never known a trip to Dingwall to, on the surface of it, appear so fraught, Sean, beforehand. Mm-hmm. You know, but a lot of Celtic supporters were full of anxiety, as Alan said, Alison said about it. And you know the one now lends itself to to more anxiety, but I thought Celtic coped with it really well. I didn't see Ross mm-hmm. County scoring. The one Cameron Carter Vickers block, which was an outstanding block from uh, I think mm-hmm. it was Regan Charles Cook shot that apart. It was uh, I don't think Celtic were troubled because Joe Hart never had a safety mate either. Uh, and to be fair, he did pull off a cracking save, but it was offside anyway. They took the chance, <laughs> wasn't it? but uh, no, I. County in the second half they pushed a bit higher in general and I thought they did play better and they had a wee bit of a spell but without what I would never I would never have said I was overly worried that they were going to score if you want to put it that way. Yeah. Um, Carter Vickers did come up with a big block. In general, 
I still I don't think it was it was that nervy. Yeah, neither do um, I. And um, I think that's that's kind of what you're getting at the the, the contrast between the kind of nerves before it and actually the game itself. But again, I was I would argue that's testament to the way that they've they've been coached all week, but also also the way they've been coached all season. And it was you that asked the question of Ange Postecoglou on Friday, Tony. They got the response. It's probably one of the better responses I've I've ever heard yeah. them give. Um, because sometimes he gets asked the same question a few times and it's a different way of answering it. This wasn't one of those. You asked him about sports psychology and, and different things about that kind of thing. And, and he said um, that a loss shouldn't derail your efforts and commitment to a cause or that kind of thing. If you let a, a loss derail you, then you would let a win derail you if you don't play your game. Yeah. And it's success and failure have equal demons within them. I think you saw a team that was not letting any demons get to them when they took to the field at Dingwall because the opening... Yeah. The opening third of the game was all Celtic, and I know they scored in the twelfth minute, but it was the, the first ten minutes were played in County's County's defensive third, and I think that's that speaks to the, the way that he's uh, the way that he's ingrained his message. All right, it didn't come off at Hamden the week before, but that to me makes it more impressive that it did um, at, in Dingwall. And another thought, Alison as well was Star Carol Starfelt, who <laughs> didn't enjoy it best time against Jordan White at Dingwall the first time. He never got involved in anything. Yet the same play, he was up against the same player. So that I think that was a, that he, yeah, he, he, a reflection of the game. I think it just yeah. uh, it's a reflection of how dominant Celtic were in an attacking sense. I thought Ross County had sporadic moments in in Celtic's box, but they were kind of few and far between. There were a couple of second half moments, but essentially, I think the game was played out in, in Ross County's yeah. half. Yeah, definitely. Well. Guys, another happy Monday. Six ahead with four to play. Rangers game coming up on Sunday and we'll preview that because it's a big one. If Sean says it could go a long way to clinching the title. Uh, we'll speak about that as, as we move forward in the week. But you can see along the strap line, if you want to subscribe to the Celtic Way for a pound a month for the first two months, you know what to do. Hit the subscribe button. Log on to www celticway.co.uk forward slash subscribe we appreciate all the subscribers we appreciate all your comments in the comment section enjoy your day guys and enjoy your week it'll be a long week i guess again but yeah you can go into it with a wee bit more cheer and fettle and and relaxed frame of mind sean allison do you think relaxed frame of mind I think so. Oh, right, Alison, what was the way you put it? The most pressure-free derby you're going to get? I think it is. I think the pressure was all at, at Dingwall. I think if there's a slip, it opens the door to a, a collapse. I think the fact that you come through that and you know that a, a Celtic know a win on, on Sunday, given the goal difference, is essentially clinching the title. And I think, I think the, the, I think the result yesterday, I, I, I think that defines the. the Title. I, I, I think um, you know you just don't see anything happening now in in terms of, a, of an adverse reaction from Celtic. Enjoy your pressure-free week, guys, <laughs> and we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>